Welcome to Podcast 83, a regular look at the news, stories, and trends related to Michigan's 83 counties. From Keweenaw to Monroe, Chippewa to Berrien, brought to you by the Michigan Association of Counties. Uh, welcome everyone to Podcast 83, uh, the only podcast put on by the Michigan Association of Counties. We've been on a little summer hiatus here, and clearly we are rusty at our podcasting skills because we've been jerking around here for a few minutes. But uh, welcome, good to see everyone, you're, you're here everyone. We've got a few things to go over here as we uh, come back from a summer hiatus. Of course, Dina, Megan, uh, one thing that uh, did not get done prior to in-district time by the legislature was a budget. So let's first start off there, Dina. Why don't we go over what is done with the budget, where we are expecting the budget to go at this point, because there's a deadline looming. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the second deadline is looming, actually. Um, so usually the legislature tries to get the budget done prior to their summer in district time, Steve, which was really nice way of you saying that. Um, but this year that didn't happen. They had a statutory deadline of July 1st to get it done and they missed that. This was, you know, as a result of all of those other budget negotiations that had fallen apart in previous years so they committed to have a budget done by july 1st that did not happen um, not only did that not happen they didn't have target agreements so the leadership hadn't gotten together and really negotiated out how much money they were going to allocate per budget um, over the summer that did happen um, so now we know that we have some high dollar numbers that are that are plugged away and set aside for different departmental budgets but the details within each one of those individual budgets has not been established yet. Um, the legislature is back in session now. They are gonna start working on hammering out the details of the budget. I think quite a bit has been done behind the scenes, um, but it's not quite finished yet. So we expect that to be done by the end of September, October. If it's not done by the end of September, October 1st is a government shutdown. We've seen that in years past, it didn't, usually last very long but it was very ugly for both sides who couldn't come to an agreement so i i fully expect them to get this done by the end of september we just don't have all the details on it yet yeah not a ton of session days left to get get the budget done either right i mean there's really but by that that october 1st deadline there's only about what eight nine session days correct yeah but most of this work is done behind the scenes so they don't necessarily have to be in session they just need those long days to vote out all the budgets Right. And meet for their conference committees and vote the budgets out. Now, you know, I think, what do, what do you think, Megan? What do you think is going on with the budget? Anything we really got to watch out for? Are they going to get it done? Yes. Oh, no. Megan's audio still isn't working. <laughs> All right. Just, well, just, you can just agree. It's fine. Yeah, Megan agrees. All right. Um, Moving on, Dina, you've been doing a lot of work with the state lately and, and some of our uh, some other interest groups on um, ARP funds and maybe some ideas that um, some match programs some things like that that we're kind of recommending to the state uh, to put together for an option for counties, uh, townships, cities, villages, you know, variety of different groups that could participate in. You want to talk about that a little bit and, and where some of those discussions are? Yeah, this is a, this is a pretty big endeavor, and I think it's fairly unprecedented how much effort we've put into it, how much the other local unit organizations have put into it, and all the interest groups who are on board with it. Um, so if, if everybody remembers, we've talked about this for several months now, the state is getting $6.5 billion out of, out of those American Rescue Plan funds. Counties are getting $1.9. Um, you know, cities, villages, and townships are all broken up, you know, and each of them are getting different amounts, of course. The issue is, is that how far do those dollars go? They're really one-time, you know, monies to make up for revenue loss, to invest in things that were really affected by the pandemic, um, and, and to correct things in case we have, you know, more problems going forward. Uh, but how far do those dollars stretch? So we get together with a lo other local unit, with MML, we put together this, this ask of a match program for the state money. And we had asked for about $3.9 billion for different categories. Those categories included clearly eligible expenditures. So for water infrastructure, drinking water, storm water, sanitary, 
um, for broadband infrastructure. Hi, Megan. Um, for broadband, for housing, for you know economic development, public health and public safety asks. Um, what am I missing? Oh, and then local community sustainability, fiscal stability. Um, so out of that 3.9, it started out great. We've met with all kinds of legislative leaders. We've met with interest groups. We have a very large coalition that's been formed um, and conversations are ongoing. Now that we have the coalition formed though, we've broken out into all these different subgroups and we're really trying to put some meat on the bones. And we think we may actually ask for more than the 3.9 billion based on the amount of need that's out there. Um, so all of that is still very much in the works. But I want to tell everyone it's not going to get done in the September budget season. They're going to look at allocating these American Rescue Plan funds for, for the most part after they get the fiscal year 22 budget done. So we have a little bit of time to put meat on the bones. Lots of participants, lots of coalition members, really positive conversations, positive feedback. So we're encouraged by it. Megan, you're leading up one of those. What do you think? Yeah, I think I, I think I can be heard now. So, uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, you know, I'm leading the public health and public safety group. I, I think you know we have a lot of great folks around that table. Um, a lot of people with good resources back at home that come up with really innovative models, particularly when it comes to criminal justice and the mental health system. Um, and so, I think it's just really an opportunity to make sure that the states incentivizing unique um, transformational change. And um, I think from the conversations with the budget office, governor's office, legislature, everyone's focused on that. So um, I think overall, we have a really great group on the coalition and um, we're working hard. I mean, I think every day, basically some subgroup is meeting, leads of the subgroup uh, meet every Thursday, Friday, we have the entire coalition. So, I mean, it's on our calendars every day of the week, we're talking about these funds. Yeah, that's great. So it's, you know, just in a nutshell, just so everyone follows everything. See, we got our budget that's going to get done. And then separately, we had this ARP discussion going on with the state on, on what are ways they can put up their ARP funds that'll allow for counties specifically, but other public, public entities, the option of participating in some of these plans. So I think it's important to note that, that this is something that the state, we were looking for the state to kind of be the main funding source in some way, shape or form, and then we participate where we would want to. So I think it's a great idea. You know, when you look at some of the, the funding levels that some of these smaller entities are getting, it'll really help them um, utilize those funds in the best way possible because some of them are just not getting that much really to do anything with. So they're going to need to have some matching opportunities there. So good to hear, good to hear. All right, then uh, moving on, um, four-year county commissioner term, something we've been working on for a while. Uh, we did get it over uh, into the house after uh, the spring session. Uh, Dina, you want to give an update on where we're at with that? Um, so far, so good, Steve. Yeah, we got it out of the Senate. Um, we only had four no votes in the Senate, so we were pretty grateful about that. Great bipartisan support. Now the bills have been referred to the House Committee on Local Government and Municipal Finance, chaired by Representative Julie Kelly. Um, Julie Kelly was the, the chair of the Elections Committee in the House that voted it out last legislative term. So we already know she's, she's pretty supportive. She's willing to have a hearing on it. We've been meeting over the summer with members of the committee to see where they stand on the legislation. Um, I think we don't, we, although we don't have unanimous support in the committee, we have overwhelming support in the committee. So now it's just a matter of timing and scheduling. We have been in touch with the governor's office and, and they've indicated, um, you know, not full blown support because I, I don't have the governor's commitment from it, but staff have said that they are very supportive of the concept of extending county commissioner terms to four years. So I think I think it's a matter of time, We're making progress. That's good news, good news. And um, before I forget too, if you do have questions, feel free to type them in the chat. Uh, we'll be answering all the questions at the end. You can just type them in the chat field uh, and we will get them answered. Uh, Megan, something that we seem to talk about uh, every few years is, is and a huge issue in our state and everywhere in this country is mental health and the ways of funding it, how is it, how the service is delivered, that sort of thing. Um, we have some plans that are, have been introduced, but 
In the Senate, we have a plan that's been introduced by uh, Majority Leader Shirky, and we're starting to have some meetings about that, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So um, maybe a couple months ago now, sort of right before summer recess, uh, Senator Shirky had introduced House Bills 597 and 598. Um, we were anticipating this. We had heard a lot and seen some drafts and some of his integration plans, um, you know, before introduction and had um, have had a couple of conversations with his staff on this. Um, that, you know, for a long time, he has really been focused on turning the financing and administration of our uh, of our mental health system over to uh, private health plans. And it's been something that um, our board, our committee, our members have been uh, very concerned about for a long time, kind of taking it out of that uh, public system, the county-based system, um, how, what that means for um, accountability and public oversight for our citizens that are in the system. Um, and so, you know, we've seen the bills, they've been introduced and hearings uh, we expect um, to be starting tomorrow, actually. They posted for committee tomorrow and my understanding is um, they will have a series of committee hearings. So um, we are, you know, we'll be engaged with those. We've heard a lot from county commissioners, our community mental health directors, law enforcement, our courts, um, many people that, that touch various aspects of the system. And um, so we'll definitely stay engaged um, and get information out to our members. But we do, we, we will see committees start uh, to begin this week, uh, into next week, and potentially after that. So. Um, more to come on that. And then, of course, the House has their own version that's significantly different. They've started committees as well with Representative Whiteford leading that charge. Um, so we're engaged on both sides and um, we'll continue to keep everyone updated. Yeah, and I know our Health and Human Services Committee has had a lot of discussions about those plans and and uh, ha has weighed in and give, given you some good direction there. So that's been really helpful. Uh, then, D Dina, last week we saw President Biden come down with a mask mandate. Uh, or not a mask mandate, sorry, vaccine mandate, a national vaccine mandate for employers of over 100 people. Uh, I know we got a fair amount of phone calls on that to our office on what that means for county government being employers. Um, and I think almost, uh, I think there's about nine counties that have less than 100 employees that, it, that wouldn't affect, but the rest of the counties could possibly be affected, correct? They could be, but I think it's, if we've got a slow down a little bit before we jump to the conclusion that everyone has to implement this vaccinated or weekly testing um, mandate from the federal government. Um, where it stands right now, and, and we did reach out to um, Colin Stoker, and I think we put it an article in our legislative update last week that talked about it, and they said, slow down a little bit. You've got, you know, federal um, employment safety rules, and then you've got the Michigan MIOSHA rules, and Michigan's going to have to adopt their own rules based on what the federal government does when they um, adopt and implement their rules. So it's still going to be, you know, a matter of time yet before we know how it's actually going to affect each um, employer, you know, that has over 100 employees. We also know there are being, you know, those rules are going to be challenged. There's going to be lawsuits challenging those. So at this point, um, it's kind of a hold off, wait and see. It's not like you have to implement this on Monday. Um, we will for sure keep an eye out on it um, and, and report to our counties on, you know, whatever information we find out when there's, you know, updates. Um, but as of now, it's not necessarily in effect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely keep folks updated as soon as we get more information um, on it as well. So stay tuned to our legislative updates and our social media uh follows and everything like that. And we'll be providing more information there. And then finally, we're in the final stretches here. Uh, coming up to our conference in a couple weeks here, starting, um, uh, what is it, September 26th, which is a Sunday, and we'll be there through September uh, 28th, the Tuesday, up on Mackinac Island, the Grand Hotel. Uh, we've got really good registration right now, really good speakers. Uh, you can still register if you'd like to, although unfortunately you won't get the, the hotel rate that we had, but um, we look forward to seeing everyone back in person, first time in person in about a year and a half, our first conference, definitely in person in a year and a half. And I know uh, a lot of our folks are excited about that. Uh, so with that, Dina, Megan, anything else you want to add before we open it up for questions? No? All right. And this week, new to the podcast, we have Hannah Sweeney, 
who's going to be uh, and, uh, putting up the questions for us to answer. Hannah is our legislative assistant, getting a little cross-trained on the uh, podcast. So Hannah, do we have any questions? So I actually took over Hannah's office, so my audio would work, but I am looking at the chat. I don't see any questions at this point. Poor so Hannah. You totally stole her, you know, her screen time, her, her stage time for the first time. Today. Yeah, I will. I'm, I'm happy to leave. You can see <laughs> and meet Hannah. All right, we'll give it a few more minutes here and see if anyone wants to post anything in the chat before we go. Um, you know, I, I, I'll say this. We do expect a very busy fall. You know, just the, the number of, of messages we're getting from members on, on different kinds of legislation that they want to take up. You know, I know in my realm, it's a bunch of property tax exemptions and how do we how do we rectify all of that? So we've got many different levels of that happening. Budget will be happening, funding um, for all kinds of stuff. There's dam legislation, water infrastructure legislation, broadband work groups. I mean, it's going to be an extremely busy fall. So I would say, you know, listen, we're going to get back to a regular schedule on our podcast. Um, and keep you updated as to as to what's going on. Read the legislative update, please. Um, there's always a ton of information in there, and a lot of times it, it gets overlooked. So I would encourage everyone to really pay attention to that too. Great, Anna. Did you, did you see anything pop up on the chat there for question wise? No, nope, no questions yet. All right. Well, we gave yeah, everyone a chance. You know, we've been gone for a while, Dina. They, everyone forgot about us. So we'll, we'll, maybe next week we'll get a few more questions. But thanks, everyone. We appreciate it. And look forward to uh, talking next week and seeing everyone in a few weeks. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Podcast 83, brought to you by the Michigan Association of Counties. 